I wrote a narrative of, of the story and we began to find uh, photographs and footage to tell the story and it was the narrative that was used to get the funding from HBO and National Endowment of the Arts. And then as the story progressed, it was my writing that formed the sort of roadmap of the story. The filmmaker Nancy Bursky and I are friends from 20 years ago. And we've worked on other projects, not films, but other projects. And Nancy read Mildred Loving's obituary in the newspaper and had a dream of making it into a film. And she and I both agreed that it was a, a story that wasn't, was not well known. Cox and HBO have been like great partners for many, many years. And then for them to take this project, the loving story of a, a biracial couple um, setting the stage for, or really going forward, uh, to allow black and white folks to be able to marry. Mildred Loving, at the age of um, 18, a, a black woman, well, a woman of color, she actually was a mixture of uh, Rappahannock Indian, uh, African American. She fell in love with Richard Loving, a white man, Unfortunately, they lived in the Commonwealth of Virginia. They got married, and they were arrested for having gotten married in another state. They got married, and they crossed state lines and went back home to live. They were arrested, and they were given a choice of either um, going to prison or leaving the state, and they left the state. Mildred and Richard Loving fought a battle all by themselves. There were only the two of them. They never belonged to a civil rights organization. They never went to a march. They never carried a sign. They read about Martin Luther King in the newspaper. They never met them. They lived and because they, when the case was over, because they did not want to grant interviews, uh, they were just, they lived and died quietly unknown. Very few people knew about it. People, it, um, it's taught, the case is taught in law school, of course, in domestic relations, but we're now bringing it forward for people to think about in the context of the fight for freedom in this country. I personally have a, a, a personal interest. I, my children are biracial, so had it not been for the loving couple, they, their parents, their biological parents, could not be together legally. And so as we go into Black History Month, I just, I, I step back and not only do we just look at our forefathers and people that, that stood out and were proud and courageous and doing things to say, this matters. Well, here is a couple that said, we matter and we're important and this is right. And these are our rights to be together because we love one another. I applaud HBO for telling that story. I applaud them for being able to allow my children to be able to see that story and know that they are individuals because this couple stood up and said, this is the right thing to do. The reason this has made history in the civil rights movement is they decided that they had the right to live wherever they wanted to live. They had the right to be married to each other and they wanted to go back home and it took them nine years to get back home and the case went all the way through the state courts through up to the U.S. Supreme Court and nine years after they were married they were able to go back home where he built her a house and he was a bricklayer and they lived and they raised their children on the farm with places to run and play and enjoy themselves the way they had grown up. One thing about the documentary is it's a wonderful love story, and it's also a story about the legal process, and it's about civil rights. And so when it's all said and done, it has all those things interwoven into it. And then at the end, there's a panel of folks who've studied the loving family, who've studied the rights of people, and they're here to make sure that we can answer any questions, we can address any issues, because when it's all said and done, when we walk out of this theater, we've had a great experience from the documentary, we've had a great experience from the discussions. And then, you know, as we close our eyes and, and, and go to slumberland, we've had an experience that we never knew we had.